What's happening guys? Today I got a 2008 Ford Focus with a 2.0 liter Duratec engine in it and it has one heck of a problem going on here. You can see the valve cover has a slight leak to it. Not too bad, right? But you start pulling one of these coils out of here and oh boy. These spark plug wells are just filled with oil. And what that's from is the valve cover gasket itself has these rings around each one of these uh, ports on here and they failed. They get hard, brittle, they contract, and guess what? Oil splashes around and right down into the wells. Causes misfires, causes hesitation, stumbling, all kinds of issues. Now the valve cover gasket for this thing is actually the exact same gasket as the 2.3 liter and 2.5 liter. And I already have a, have a video on that uh, replacement, but this one has its own special, unique wire harnesses and stuff like that to deal with. Uh, um, alternator wires, stuff like that, torque sequences. So we're going to do a dedicated video just to the 2.0 liter Duratec engine um, because this is such a common failure. All right, hopefully this is a good angle for you guys to see everything that's going on uh, and not be lost here. I got plenty of lighting and all that. So the name of the game at this point is cleanliness. There's a lot of oil, a lot of rocks, a lot of dirt on top of here, and you don't want that getting into your valve train. So we're gonna do our best to make sure it's as clean as possible. So the very first thing we're gonna do is take each one of these coils out and get them off to the side. So there's an eight millimeter nut or bolt right here on each one of them. So you take those out, put them off to the side, and we're good. And then each one of them has an electrical connector to them. You just depress the tab on there, and then pull. And then the coils will come right up and out of there. Now, you'll notice these are gonna have be full of oil, and that's probably the reason you're in here changing this valve cover gasket. So you do want to change the boots on here, but I'm not sure you can get boots separately on this particular vehicle because they're going to be swollen and they're not going to seal up uh, around the spark plug just right anymore. Now on this one, we're changing all the coils because these actually have a lot of cracks up here in the epoxy and stuff like that. So we're just going to change all the coils out on here. It, you'll find that... Um, a lot of these parts, motorcraft parts, that are high quality, you can get them on Amazon and save a lot over going to the dealer. So in all my videos, I put links to the parts I use, gaskets, tools, chemicals, uh, so you guys can have a nice, uh, easy reference. So we're going to toss all those right in the garbage can. This one was really bad. What I found is that you'll go through, you'll look down these holes, boom. Bad, worse, worse, oh dear Lord. And you'll find that uh, more often than not, more cylind certain cylinders are gonna be worse than others. So at this point, you can see there's leaves and all kinds of stuff on top of here. Again, cleanliness is the name of the game. But at this point, we're gonna disturb more dirt. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start pulling off the harnesses here to get some clearance, get this stuff out of the way. And after that, we'll start the cleaning process. So what you're going to want to use is a, a trim tool like this and or a cat claw like this. And this is going to help you get all these harnesses and stuff out of the way. Each one of them has their purpose. You can see, put it on there, work it against there, and it'll bring up the retainers evenly on there. You want to go through and disconnect all your injectors. Get them all disconnected. So we're gonna pull this harness out of our way so we can just work on the valve cover and concentrate. So pieces that stem off like this, these little branches that come off like this, same thing, get them loose up top here um, so we have the extra slack. And this right here where they're extra long like this, these retainers, is where the cat claw comes in handy because you can grab onto it and pull. Uh, instead of sliding over it. So you see all the extra slack we just got right there by doing that. So you just simply follow it along, okay? And make sure you disconnect everything. Like the, the cam position sensor right here. We'll pull that off, make sure you're careful with that. Um, the last injector right here. 
another harness that branches off right here uh, it goes down to the intake there get that off there now these harnesses they're gonna be super you know um, hard because of all the heat cycles the engines gone through so you might start cracking some of these retainers and stuff like that it's nothing too big to worry about but if there's major damage where you're gonna have a loose harness you of course want to fix it just be careful and you won't have to fix anything in the end most times so we'll get some more slack here i'm gonna pull it off over here too just leave a little more slack stuff like that now this right here is a vapor line for uh the, the canister purge there and it goes on over so we can go ahead and just follow it down and there's gonna be a blue clip down here we're gonna slide that off and then we're going to um get it off of here a little finesse it'll come off and then we can just put it up and out of the way okay now this one right here is your fuel line that goes down and over to your fuel rail and it's plastic again brittle so make sure you're extra careful with it you can either leave it on there or take it off um, mine's leaking for some reason I didn't even touch it yet uh, I could smell it and there's a little bit of fuel around it so we're gonna go ahead and just take mine off like I said you could take yours off or not um, just the one side here and again flip it up and out of our way and that way when you're pulling the cover on and off we're not gonna bump into it and potentially break it so if you do pull it off it just has uh, a green retainer on it get it loose Put a shop towel around it. We're actually gonna get this guy out of the way first. Get a shop towel underneath here. And wrap it around a little bit and we can start wiggling it off. Because yours might have some pressure in it. Of course, do this on a cold engine. At this point, let some fuel drain out. It'll wash the O-rings in there, it's perfectly fine and then we'll flip it up and out of the way. And the other thing is this fuel rail is gonna you know, bleed down just a little bit on there. Might leak out the ends, so be ready for that. So we'll leave this here for right now and let it drain out and continue pulling our harness off on here. We'll just simply keep going along and we'll disconnect this uh, connector right here simply so we get you know more wiggle room here. Let's pull the CHT sensor right here. It's got a little tab on it. You just press in on it. We're going to have to clean that later because it's full of oil. Let's go over here. Just follow the harness along and get ourselves some slack. Now look at that. This back here is going to be really bad. You can see the convolute is disintegrating. It's disintegrating. So these, you know, retain them it might disintegrate too. Look at this. Wow. Because the exhaust manifold's right back here. So uh, we're going to have to try to keep at least one of these retainers on here to hold the uh, bracket here. Wow. I've never seen them this bad wow um, but like I said it does happen that's why I said just be careful something like this on, on wow that was bad um, is kind of unavoidable I mean it's just disintegrating if I can look at it so the wire will be fine though uh, it's just good. so let's go ahead and pull this PCV ventilation line off there's a little retainer on it. Just push it off into the side here. And then you simply pull the line off. This one's a little hard to get to. Boom, comes right off. This one again, I'll swivel out of the way. So let's disconnect the retainer over here for the alternator wiring. Be very careful. Okay. 
And then we'll take this, and we'll just tuck it back underneath here, out of our hair. Okay, so this harness is loose over here, okay? Now, right here, there's the radio interference capacitor. And make sure you guys can still see that. So just follow us over. There's a radio interference capacitor right here. We're just going to leave it uh, connected to the harness here. We're going to unbolt it right here. It's 8 mil bolt. And then let's unbolt the ground over there. Because it's always a good idea to do that. Um, and when you do so, what you do is you clean up that ground just by unbolting it and bolting it back in. So while you're fixing the valve cover, we're actually fixing other issues on the vehicle this way. Okay, that's all part of that now. We'll keep these two bolts off to the side because they're special ground bolts. Um, we'll keep them off to the side so we know they're just for that. And let's follow this harness down over here. Um, We'll follow this harness down. This one feeds, should be the alternator. Should be the low voltage control for the alternator. So there's another retainer back here. And boom. Look at all that we got now. So we're good to go there. Now this bracketry right here, you follow it down and on the back side of the head here should be a 13 millimeter bolt holding it in. So what I use for something like that is a gear wrench. We'll get in there and knock it loose. Should be a 13. And it shouldn't take much just like that too. It'll come right off. And that looks a little something like that. So we'll keep these together and put them off to the side. Now this control wire right here that goes down to the alternator You'll see it's clipped into the red uh, main power lead to the alternator. Let's unclip it, pops right out, and we get a ton more slack. And we're gonna take this, get our red power lead out of the way. We're gonna take this whole harness and we're gonna drape it around this side of the engine here. I'll even drape it around the uh, engine mount just so we get away from the valve cover itself. And we'll just follow that down over here as best we can. Let me get that extra slack and get it out of the way. Something like that right there. We got tucked behind the power steering reservoir here. Around the intake over here. We'll get this guy tucked away. Okay, there we go. The valve cover in about you know 10 minutes or so is clean and clear. It's ready to come off. So we need to clean up uh, around it, around the outside here, okay? And then we're gonna clean those wells out too while the cover's still on and protecting the rest of the valve train, okay? So let's clean it up with some compressed air, some brake clean, some rags. Um, I even have my uh, brake suction tool here. We're going to suck those wells out on there uh, so they're nice and clean. And then we can proceed with pulling the valve cover off. All right, so that's clean enough right there. We've got the excessive debris out of the way. We'll finish cleaning that valve cover once it's off. We're now safe to pull it off. Now, what you'll notice is that there's a couple of studs, different lengths, and uh, bolts all over the place. There's a couple in here, and then, of course, the perimeter. It's best because it is a plastic valve cover. Just jump around and kind of detorque it as you go along. They're all eight millimeter. Some careful prying with our cat claw and trim tool will break the bond and we're gonna do the rest by hand on here. So down here is a good place to start. You kind of start getting it up. You help it with your finger. You can hear all that right there. That's just the bond of, of the gasket over the years. There's no sealant down here. So you want to just kind of help it along here and there. And get it loose. 
Now, if it's not moving at all like you see here, it's moving a little bit, we know we're good to go. We can keep proceeding. If it's not moving at all, look around once again to make sure you got all the bolts loose. Um, and then you can keep going here. And after a while, it'll just pop like that. Boom, done. Tools go away. So at this point, we'll lift straight up on here. Make sure all these guys are loose. That guy wasn't. That guy is loose. Okay, there we go. And we'll pull it straight off of there without losing any bolts. Now looking at this with the valve cover off, you can see each one of these cam lobes is like brand new, which I'm surprised uh, that's so new looking underneath here, um, considering the, the condition of the rest of the vehicle. So oil changes must have been on their mind. Now the key here is, you'll see the rim edge here of the cylinder head. It's going to have some oil, of course, dirt, debris. You want to go along with the rag and pull it off and away. Okay, all the way around. And we'll get the edge clean by pulling it off to the um, outside here. Something like that. We'll keep it clean that way on the inside of the engine. So we'll do an initial cleaning just like this. In the center here, it may just be oil so we can just clean it up. Keep it real nice. Um, and then we'll come back for a final cleaning at the end here. Okay, next you want to take some brake clean, spray into a rag, and start cleaning the gasket surface on the cylinder head right here itself. Now, that should be sufficient for 90% of this, uh, the, of the cleaning on here. What you don't want to do is start going after bits of corrosion like you see here and here. It's corroded for a reason. It's on the outside of the ceiling surface. You want to go after the actual ceiling surface and get that nice and clean as you see here. Now, right here where the cylinder head meets the front cover by timing gears here, on the passenger side is gonna be a glob of sealant. And it's the only place on here where you need to clean off sealant. So what you wanna do is stuff a rag down in here, right in this area right here, and of course the front here. And then we're gonna proceed with a scraper and we're gonna scrape it off into the side here. And that looks a little something like this. So we're gonna take our rag, put it down in here, because there's you know, a chance you could get it, the sealant knocked the wrong way. And we don't wanna put sealant chunks down on the engine. Okay, so we'll keep it nice and tight right here, as you see, and then we'll tighten it up over here, just like that, okay? And look at this down out of the way just a little bit. It's nice and tight there though. And then we're going to take a razor blade at just like this and we're going to scrape away. We're going to chisel actually. We're going to uh, go like this, back and forth, okay? And we're going to try to skim off the top here and just get that piece out of there, anywhere but the cylinder head. And then we'll go ahead and Keep it nice and flat so you don't scrape the heck out of it. And again, we're gonna bring it away. And the idea is to get the old sealant off. So the new sealant is actually attaching to the metal. And not loose sealant underneath. Something like that. Okay. And the same thing here is gonna be on the other side in the back back there where the front cover meets the cylinder head once again. So just do the same thing. And then we'll go ahead and get this up and out of here too. So we don't forget it in there. And then we'll go over those areas with the brake clean on the rag once again. So they're nice and clean to accept the new sealant. Okay, now, as far as the, the valve cover goes here, like I said, there's four different gaskets. There's one, two, three, and then the big one around the outside. You want to use something like this. Pick, small screwdriver, and we'll just get in here and start getting it up and out of here. 
And you're gonna notice, maybe even on yours, you might pull, you start pull chunks out of there because it's so hard and it's cracking. This one, it's nice and stiff, but it's coming out in one piece. So that makes it much, much easier. Just make sure you get the full piece out. And there we go. And this right here, it's hard, it is why it's not sealing under all operating conditions. And that's where the leak is coming from. <clears throat> As the oil splashes around in here, splash, 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 up and over, seeps right past here and into the, the plug well. Of course, we're upside down right now, but you get the point. Ooh. And then you, of course, do the same thing on the big one here. That goes around a perimeter. This one seems pretty stiff. Especially back by the, uh, the exhaust manifold back there. You saw the harness just crumbling. Well, that's kind of how the gasket turns to after a while. So this one luckily all came out. So we have all four pieces, toss them out. Now, of course, at this point, you want to go over this and clean it very well with some brake clean, uh, compressed air, all that good stuff. But up here in the front, where the, the gears are, and that front cover is, again, you're going to have sealant here. And like right here, you can see there's sealant on there. So use your razor blade, your scraper. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to... Get in the groove here and make sure it's all gone and this way it's nice and clean going back together all right here's the valve cover nice and clean don't worry about some of the staining on here you're never going to get it all off of there it's just fine just get the bulk of the grease off so we can start fresh with new seals. So what I do is I grab the smaller seals first, get those in, uh, because a lot of people have tendency to forget these ones, and they'll just put the one on the outside and be done. So let's get these in and make sure they're in right. Now this one right here has a locating tab right here, right there, and that'll align the rest of it on here. Now what's nice about the Ford gaskets is nowadays they're not too expensive actually. Um, they're all inclusive and they fit nice and tight. So when you put them in and you wanna go and put that valve cover back down in there, they're not gonna fall out, they're not gonna dislodge. So go all the way around and make sure they fit. And this one is different also. It has a locator uh, for the bolt hole here. I'll go through and you'll feel it's all the way in there. No question about it. And then this one is the last remaining one here. Get that one in. And it shouldn't be twisted or uh, anything like that. It should sit in there nice and straight. And it should fall right in. Now, uh, the one on the outside here is a little more tricky. You need to find the locating tabs on here. Da, 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 da. It's going to be a little harder on here to find. But you'll find a piece like this where it's rectangular like that. A bump out section there. Uh, that goes right here and right here where that sealant goes. So we found one. Let's find the other one. It's obviously over here. So we're looking at this way. Here's the other one right here. Now, does that match or do we need to flip it? It looks like it needs to go this way. The gasket was inside out. 
So what I do is I'll get a, a couple of them going there. Make sure the gasket's not twisted, okay? Then let's follow these along right next to push in just a little bit. And we're gonna make sure everything lines up before going any further. Each one of these point w points where it lines up is gonna help you get the length for it. So right here we aligned it and now we have our length between here and here. And we can simply push it in at that point. And now go down the corners here and get them all located. Same thing right here and here. And you just work it all the way around. Make sure it's pushed in all the way. Now in the end, I'll go over it one more time all the way through, give it a visual, and of course work it into the groove. So we're good to go. We got our center ones in already. Outer ones in. Looks good. Let's go over to the vehicle and apply that sealant so we can torque this thing down. Okay, now with both our gasket surfaces clean, our new gasket pushed into the valve cover, let's go ahead and bolt it down. Now, a quick visual over the valve train is always a good idea to, to make sure nothing fell into there, any kind of debris. Everything looks okay. Let's go ahead and apply the engine sealant. Now, the sealant I recommend is the Permatex Ultra Black. It's ultra strong stuff made just for dealing with uh, engine oils. So those two spots you scraped off earlier where the cylinder head meets the front cover, you want to apply a, you know, a dime size uh, dab of it right there, maybe even less with these ones because the, the head is so small right there. And let's go ahead and plop this down on top of there, get it semi-lined up. And then we'll simply screw in a couple of these studs by hand and that'll help align it perfectly in there. And get it set. Just make sure you're not pinching any wires like they're over here is really close um, before going any further. And then we'll simply go around down here with a quarter inch and we'll get these started and then we'll start the torquing sequence. Now once the bolts are all snugged down in a swirl pattern or in torque sequence, which I do, we can go ahead and start torquing them down in sequence for a final torque on here. Now the torque spec on here is 89 inch pounds and we'll go through each one of them together on here. I'll number them off. But I will also uh, put a link to the diagram in the description down below. So let's go ahead and start torquing these down to 89 inch pounds. And it's best to use, you know, an inch pound torque wrench instead of converting it. Um, and it's also best to not use any kind of extensions. So we'll go ahead, that's number one. Right here's number two. Right here. And then we'll go back here to three. And torque on here is pretty darn critical. You wanna do it and you wanna do it right. This is number four. This is number five. Number six. I always recheck them afterwards. Number seven, right here. This one right here is number eight. Nine.
10. This is 11. And then we got 12, 13, and 14. Okay, so I went through all of them on here in sequence. The gasket has settled to an extent. So what you wanna do is go over them all once again, just to make sure they're torqued. You don't need to go in sequence again, uh, but just to make sure in case they did settle, which is common when you're torquing down any kind of gasket. You'll, you'll find, you'll go back over them and you'll turn a little bit before they, click all right that's about it it's all torqued down like new now you want to let the sealant dry for at least an hour preferably overnight before starting the engine uh, so it can fully set on there now the rest of the installation is just the reversal of removal so all the parts we took back we took off just go ahead and put them back onto there the one exception is the ignition coils like i said make sure they're not um, ruined by the oil that got down in there, swollen or damaged in any way. Um, these, of course, are going to be new on this vehicle because they were cracked. When you do so, though, I'll put a little bit of dielectric grease in the end there, and then you can go ahead and start bolting these back in. You just slide in there straight down, boom, and then you just line up your bolts, and we can secure these back down. Besides that, it's pretty much putting the harness back, clipping a bunch of everything in back in there, hoses, stuff like that, and you'll be good to go for hopefully another 100,000 miles. I'll see you next time.